Yeah, very good. So has everyone used, um, used <laughs> has everyone used Tag Tool? Have you given it a, a try yet? As soon as you pick it up, it's very, very intuitive. It's, uh, I really like it because they, they came up with something entirely unique, you know, uh, something that uh, they rethought the whole interface and uh, they came up with something. Uh, let me share with you uh, just a really, really fast uh, presentation, a couple of things that I think make, um, that make uh, this so cool. Uh, can you see that? Can you, can you see the slides? It, it's a performance medium, like really what Tag Tool can do is can do animation for you, but you can, you can project it just about anywhere. So there's, there's no real limitations. It's a, it's a, a projection tool. Um, in it so you can you can draw kind of cool cool stuff with it um, it's different a different approach from most drawing software but uh, it lets you do do cool stuff and uh, you can project like I said anywhere uh, which I really like you set it up with a power supply projector and uh, maybe a Wi-Fi router so you can you can share because if we were all in the same place we could actually work on the same session together which would be really cool but unfortunately we're not and big or small, it's always the creativity that's important. This is a piece that uh, my friend Benjamin did, and he projected onto his cup of coffee and his cake, and he made them talk. Um, so that's just a little, a little warm up. Um, have you seen the video that I um, of my performance in uh, uh, my performances from last year? Would you like to see that now? Before we start, I'll show it to you really quickly. Uh, just to give you an idea of what I do. Can you see that? That's the tag tool interface. This year I did a lot of work with uh, other uh, very powerful projector. I did a lot of work with um, dancers. when you can collaborate with other people. Yeah. And you can prepare some of your, your animations ahead of time so you get really complex things going on. Or if you're really fast, you can draw them live, depending on how much time you have. Okay, can you see it? Yep. Um, now when I touch my finger, okay, it's not gonna do it until I unplug it and plug it back in again. Okay, now when I touch my finger, you can see a little blue spot, okay? That's because I set it up that way. When I touch with two fingers, you can see two, two, two fingers. So I want you to try doing this. Uh, make one little dot in the middle. You might have to press twice to get your dot. Have you done that? Okay. Uh, then you've got this, can you see the little toggle there? This is animate. You can see my fingers showing up there. You can toggle between painting and animating. When I go to animate, it becomes 
yellow when I touch it. So it's selected, okay? Move it around. I can make it bigger with two fingers. Are you doing that? Yeah. Everybody's got that uh, going on? Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to make a very, very simple animation. You can see at the bottom down here, there's the record button, okay? So with one finger, I'm gonna press record. And with the other finger, I'm gonna take my animation, I'm gonna go up and down. That guy's still moving. Now, if I go to paint, I can uh, change colors with two fingers moving left and right. Are you there? Have you got that? Yeah. So yeah. Change colors and you can also change sizes. So I can start drawing and while I'm drawing, I can change the size, which is really cool. You have a little rewind thing right here. So I can undo what I did. It's like an erase button. It's just like erase, but it takes it back. I think that's pretty cool. Sometimes you can use that even for animation, but I, usually. Um, I'm just going through what you can do. I mean, if you wanted to, you could change the size and the color at the same time, which is awesome. Okay. So now I'm clicking on the animate button and I can move that guy around. Forward button, he'll keep moving. Now I can move him around. And I can go to paint, you can see the colors better. So I'll just run these some of the drawing functions. Um, when I want to make a moon, I go to yellow with the side sliders here. Why don't you guys try this? What do you think? Go to yellow. Okay. And remember, up and down is transparency. Up and down with two fingers makes it more or less. We'll just forget about that for now. But if you see those black, those squares, that means you're going on to transparency. But for now, we'll just work with solid colors. Have you got yellow? Yeah. Choose yellow. Make a nice big... Big, widen it up so you get the biggest possible circle you can get. You should be in paint and just make one spot. Now that made half a spot because I don't always get it right. Okay, there's my spot. Now, do you see the erase button? Right here, erase. I'm going to hit it again, just not quite in the center. And I deleted most of that circle. And I have a perfect moon there. I can make this guy move around. I can record him moving. And I have a moon there. It's kind of like being a DJ. They say a VJ. If you look down here on the bottom, you'll see this thing moving along. That controls the speed. Just like a DJ, you know, when he's got his records, he's got his discs. This is just like a, uh, a DJ console. So I can... I can just sort of like scratch it, make it go really fast for a second, let it go, and it'll go back to where it was. Or I can tap it and it'll pause. There's so many functions, it'd take you a while, but I'm just gonna run through them. And if you know, you remember just a few of them, it's fine, because you'll pick them up as you go along. If you touch it with two fingers, you can speed it up, the loop, or you can slow them down. You can duplicate it. So I'm making a second moon in the same place. There you go. I'm moving perfect harmony. But if I want to stop one of them, I just hit that, that at the bottom with one finger, release it. Now they're moving at different times because I stopped one of them. Um, on the left here, see where my finger is, we have the layers, okay? There's my moon, this one probably my second moon. I can select them from here. 
or I can select them by touching the actual element, which is a bit more intuitive. There's something you should know about these levels. The way that we create them while we're painting, okay, I'm gonna paint something new. I'll make it green so it's a different color. I'm gonna make another little loopy thing coming up here. Okay. Now, I wanna keep painting, but I wanna paint a second element. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the color bar with three fingers, right there, see that? Three finger top, that creates a new level for me. So now I'll draw another green thing, make it a little darker. but he's separate. They're not the same element. I can select them separately. I can animate them separately. I don't palette. That might be because you have got the basic version. Okay, if I go to basic version, paint, you have these, right? All the colors. But it still works the same way. You still create a new level by hitting this three times. Okay, I hit it with three fingers, I create a new level. I'll make it this pink one here. I hit yellow, that's all right too. Go back to animate, there he is. All right. There's really a whole bunch of ways you can use interesting shapes and uh, you can make them move with the music. If I were to uh, put some music on, I don't know. So now I can take these elements and I can make them sort of move with the music. I can record them bouncing up and down. A little thing is jumping. Maybe I'll make it move a little faster. Or maybe I'll just make a second one. It's nice when you work with music because uh, there's a, a little bit of a trick, I'll tell you, with Tag Tool. One of the things is if you get close to the pace of the music, it seems like it's moving with the music. It seems like it's been, been connected somehow, um, which isn't the case. There are uh, apps that do that. The mapping apps will actually respond and react to the music. But if you're, if you're, if you're good, you can make it sort of give the sensation that it's, it's moving and jumping. What I love about Tag Tool is that it's, it's a manual software. It's, it's really kind of low tech and high tech together. We're not talking about video mapping, which kind of gets old fast. This is just good old fashioned drawing, but you have all kinds of freedom to do it. I'm gonna go back to the pro version. If I get my full palette back, there we go. I don't think we can speed it up or slow it down. Some of these features won't be available, but it doesn't mean you can't have fun. And you can, uh, you know, you could always speed up, slow it down by just going into animate, select the object. Sometimes I'm moving fast, they're hard to catch. I can hit the, the delete button here, will stop, it'll kill off the animation, okay? So this guy's not animated anymore. I'll catch this one, he's going really fast. Hit delete, he stopped too. So now I can speed him up just by myself, manually, right? I'll listen to the beats of the music. And maybe I'll make a counter beat. I'll get this guy going. And so, you know, the two of them are going different speeds. And it's kind of like an, uh, what do you call it, oscilloscope? Okay. Anybody got any questions? Questions? No. Important in Tag Tool. And that's grouping things. Okay. You touch select right here. Okay, and then you can either choose the objects with your finger, catch them like that, okay, here, 
these two green things I created, they're dancing along. And then I hit group right here. They're not grouping for me. Why are they not grouping? They're grouped now, they move together, okay? I'm gonna select, hit the select button. I'm gonna select everything I made so far and I'm gonna do delete at the top. It's all gone. I have a clear plate. Let's make a face. What color do you want the face to be? Oh, somewhere between yellow and orange? Yeah. Okay, here's my face. I'm gonna make it sort of oval. Okay, there you go. That's my face. Now, before I create a new level, I'm gonna to go to white, take a white color. Okay. You got that? Yeah. Okay, now I wanna create a new level. Who can remember how we create a new level? Okay. Three finger tap on the on the color bar. I created a new level. Now I'm going to go to black. I'm going to pick up a size a little bit smaller, and I'm going to give them eyes, more or less, in the center. Okay, those eyes are one element. Now, if you wanted to. You could go inside and a little shadow inside, a little highlight. Okay, so I got my eyes. If I go into animate now, I can select those eyes and I can move them. One, I can even straighten them out a little bit. I can make them look left. I can look right. I can look down, make them look up. I'm just sort of rolling my finger across the iPad to do this. I want to make them look sideways, the other way. Okay, now I'm going to record this. This way, that way. He's going to look down, he's going to look up, and he's going to look straight ahead. I hold it for a bit because I want it to not be moving all the time. I take my finger off record and there he is. There's our face. Our face is looking. What do you want to add to your face? You want to add some ears? All I need to do to add ears, take any color, and I'll add a circle here on a circle here. If I go to animate, I can move these back behind. Front, back, okay? They're different levels, right? I want them on the back. I'm not gonna animate these ears too, going up and down. If you want, then you can take all the stuff you've drawn up to this point, select it, and make it into a group. You know it's a group because you'll see over here on the left, it's only one element now, it's one layer. If you want, you can ungroup it, group it, ungroup it, group it. I'd say our face needs a mouth though, right? We'll set them there. Okay, to choose a color, you can touch the color thing here with one finger and then touch your drawing, it'll select that color. So you can go back and find a color you used before and you can make a darker version of it. A big mouth. I'm gonna create a new level. How do I create a new level? Before, 
Now, on my new level, I'm going to give them a row of teeth. Remember, you got an erase button here, too. I'm going to use the erase button to clean up the end so I don't have too many teeth. And I want to separate the teeth. I'm going to take a little brush. I'm going to cut through the teeth like this. Doesn't look very happy, does he? I can make it a bottom teeth. I can hit the duplicate button and I can give him two sets of teeth. I can even make the teeth going up and down. Looks a little bit too much like Dracula to me. Can I see what you guys are working on? Show me your faces. Just hold them up. I'm trying to layer because you're going out of the app. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Those are your decks there on the right and where you can save um, the things you've been working on. For example, this face you've drawn, you can, you can save it. Um, I'll go, uh, you can see how many, uh, I got some of that, but I got to share my desktop again. Uh, okay. Share. Right here, Shakefest. You can see uh, all the things I've created. Here's a little firefly. He comes out first, he comes out transparent. So I have to go opacity right here. You see that right there? I make them completely opaque. I go to paint and there he is. So that, 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 those the little levels on the right, they're, they're there for you so you can save the thing, your creations. And then you can pull them out and you can move them around. You can take them through a series of motions. When you see a little red circle, that means you're back to where you started. So he'll keep going. If you're having trouble doing the face, we can just start again. If you want to start from the beginning, draw a circle, put the two eyes in there. Okay. What do you guys like to draw now? Landscape with some trees, okay? I'm gonna go for like a greenish color. And maybe I'll like a little darker underneath. Like even uh, yeah, this is like the uh, all animated, going around, uh, just sort of hovering a little bit like that. When I go full screen. There's the ground, sort of shaking, trembling. I'm going to make a tree just out of a, a simple dot. I'm going to take a light green color. There you go. Maybe on top of that, I'll go with a darker color. And then I'm going to make a little line to connect my tree to the ground. I go to animate. Oops, I made two different objects. Sometimes it creates a new level when you didn't want to. In that case, you select them both and group them. I'm going to put my tree back behind. Didn't group. There you go, it's grouped now. By just pushing this level back, I can make them go behind. I'm not sure if all these functions are available on the basic one. I think they are. I'm going to make my tree wave a little bit in the wind. Okay. One of the things about doing a live performance is you have to be really fast. So 
sometimes it's fun to make one object and then you like go duplicate one, two, three, four times. So now, even though you only see one, there's actually four trees there. Okay. I can move them out and I have four trees swaying in unison. Here at the top, if you want to, you've got um, background colors you can add. I tend to work with black, but you know, sometimes I use this app to create animations for my uh, work. And in that case, I need to make uh, the background white. I can make it white if I want to. There we go, white background. Here's sort of a cool thing. If I select these trees, one, two, three, four trees, okay? You can see them moving. You can see down here, oh, actually there's five of them. He's out of sync, so let's kill him off. If you touch this bar with three fingers and you move it a little bit, it'll move them in a cycle. Well, they're waving. Kind of like a stadium when everybody waves, lift, raise their arms. You can get that same effect going on in Tag Tool. I'm telling you a whole bunch of stuff here, I know, but just to give you an idea. You can make really simple creatures, which are fun to pull out. Or you can make really complicated things. I made this for the shake fest. You can see it's taking a while to load. It's a man with 10 arms. Using this basic techniques we said, you draw, you group, then you animate. Then you group again, you draw some more, and you group some more, and you animate. So back to our, uh, I want a black background again. There we go. Obviously, if you're projecting, you want a black background so that people can only see what you're drawing and you're not illuminating the whole building. We created a uh, bouncing ball to start and showed how you can use Tag Tool to create, to draw really well. It does, uh, with, your, with your left hand, you can change the size of what you're drawing and with your right mm -hmm. hand, you can draw. And you can select your creations and you can animate them. Cool. And then he'll just keep doing that for as long as I let him. We can duplicate it. Here's one that I hadn't told you about, a new feature. If you touch the screen with three fingers, if you select something, it's all kinds of gestures like this, three fingers, and you tap it with a your third finger, that will flip them. It'll flip them across the screen. Mm -hmm. Create an element and you can flip it and you can duplicate it and it'll seem like there's a lot more stuff up there than you had at the beginning. We talked nice. about how you can select things and group them. I've selected these two elements. Now I can group them and I can move them together. Cool. this time and use the erase function to erase part of it and there's your moon whoops we uh it's right here it allows you to go back and forth in time so to speak
Now, if I take, this, I take this moon and I duplicate it, I could then make him less transparent and bigger. I can make him like a shadow of the first moon. I'll duplicate that shadow. I'll make a third one. I'll stop the animation for a second so they're all in different times. I'll select the three of these bad boys. I group them. And there's my moon. It's now a, sort of a, like it's got a halo around it. Once I, I deselect it, okay, it's selected. I deselect it. Now, when I go to paint, it's going to create a new layer for me. I'm going to make a, a yellow object here. Here's a new object. I go to animate. This guy's separate. I'll make him go up and down. They're vectors, so when they go into transparency, sometimes you see these weird little lines. Gee, it can be good or bad, whichever you. We made a face. We made a face by taking a shape. Um, for me, right? I go back into paint and I'll take the um, blue. Those around. If you like Tag Tool, it's uh, a good idea to, to, to upgrade. It's, it's a good investment, in my opinion. It's come down in price. It used to be 32 euro. But then they made it much, much cheaper. There's all kinds of tricks for making the mouth. You can... Uh, I'm going to make a shape. Now we use the eraser to, to, to make them smiling this time. Uh, you know, on the basic version, you still have lots more colors. If you if you go up and down with two fingers, you can see the other colors. So you have white. I'll take white. And we talked about making teeth like this. Making it thin. Yeah. Anyways, there you go. I can group all that together and move it around. If you want to, you can make a body. I'm going to go back to that whole pro interface because I'm not really used to it. I can give him a, a blue shirt. Choose the blue color. Just make something blue. Then I'm going to take a lighter blue. I'm going to go like this. Get some stripes going. Then I'm going to clean it up with the eraser really fast. But we have a shape there. Get a new layer. an arm, take the same color as his face by clicking here and touching his face, and we can give him hands. If I zoom in, I can add some fingers there. There's a hand. And I can take this arm and I can animate it going up and down. Remember, when it goes back to the red circle, 
it's completed the loop. I duplicate the arm, and now I want to move it to the other side of his body, so I'm going to touch the screen with two fingers. Under the third one, I tap. There it goes. You have to zoom out to see where it went to. There it is. And I'll move it back, and there he is. I select these guys, bring them together, and I group them. They're um, just made of grouped elements, all the things we build. Here's the elephant I did for ShakeFest. Let's move that balloon and put it to the back. It's kind of important to remember where things are on the, the, the forward and backwards. Uh, you can see all the layers break apart. This is one, this is another, this is another, this is another. A red color. One thing I like to do is, is to make a shape with a gradient by moving my finger across at the same time. See that? I'll do it again. I start with a deep red and I'll move my finger towards a lighter color. So I get a gradient. Now once I've got that gradient, I'm going to shape it. Remember you can always edit an element by just clicking on the edit. When you're in the animation, you can click edit and it'll let you edit it again. I'm going to erase a little piece this way. And I'm going to erase a piece this way. I'm going to take my little white brush. I'm going to go right around it. Okay, I've got a little like kind of a flower petal or something here. And go around and I can make a flower. It's actually a really tricky, fast way of doing this. If you want to, I can teach it to you. Maybe in the middle, I'll make a dark orange. Select all that, group it. Fingers, you can rotate things. A lot at you, but you really just have to play around with it. I'll make them go up and down. And again, gonna duplicate that. Duplicate that. So you can quite quickly get a lot of stuff going on. One thing you might want to try is just taking, making a lot of dots and making them bounce up and down. Like what I do when I often start uh, a concert is I just create, before I go live, I create a bunch of different colored dots. Just so I get something moving really fast. It's like, okay, so those are outside of the square. The square here is, uh, see my finger moving around it. The square is what will be projected. All of those things will not be projected. So if I go to full screen, you see black. But if I take one and I move it in, now you can see them. 
practice your animation up and down. Up and down. Yeah, I got a whole lot of things going on now with just a couple of uh, little spots. Sometimes things don't have to be complicated just to get something simple going and that'll buy you some time so you can then start painting. Very cool. Um, here, I'll make a new object. I'm going into paint. Um, I'll zoom in a bit. Click here and zoom. Um, I'm going to go to paint and I'll create a green object. So here's my new object. Go to animate. So now it's yellow. I'm in the animation menu. Yellow means it's selected when I'm in the animation menu. If oh, I you went in. Okay. Animate. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm in animate. I'm in paint. You kind of got to remember because it, it shows you the word uh, paint when it's in the animation menu. And it yeah. shows you the word okay. animation when it's in the paint one. So right. now I'm in paint. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit confusing. So now I've got, I'm in the animation one. When you select it, it becomes yellow. Okay. If we were working in a session together and it was your element, I would be seeing it as blue. So that's just so you know. Okay. Um, I can move it around. It's just like a puppet show. You know, if I, if I create a little man or uh, I created this elephant uh, a while ago, um, it's just like a puppet show. You know, you have them come in, you have them dance around. Um, you can record it or you can just have them leave. It's quite remarkable, uh, the interface. If I go to the paint and I take five fingers, I get, well, actually five fingers is a problem because of the apple that used to work. Yeah, four fingers will let me draw four lines, which is quite remarkable. Yeah. Fortunately, the new iOS sometimes, so I'm drawing with four fingers. Yeah. Make a real mess really fast with four fingers. Things are just the best, you know, like making a bunch of lines and, and just painting everything yellow all of a sudden. And, uh, <laughs> it's really, uh, sometimes yeah. when you don't know what to do, you just start you know, making colors. Is there an undo button? There's the rewind button on, on any object I've created. If I go, if I select it and I edit it. So I can go back right to the beginning of that mask that I made. Well, as you can see, or you can just click to the bottom, and there we are. It's gone. Okay, cool. And that top, it's like it's that. Back. Okay. Um, I don't use that much, except when I make mistakes. To be honest, sometimes it's really useful um, for corrections. For example, if I I have to create this this element here. One. Not responding for some reason. Okay. Um, if I create an element like this, and then I want to make another line going down the side of it, like a highlight, but I made a mistake. We come back to the point where my mistake was, and I can pick it up again. Get it right. Mine is uh, frozen. I think it's uh, once you got it, it's very, very intuitive. We can make a B. A B would be really simple. Just take yellow, like that, and uh, darker color. Oops, too fat. Two wings. You need to make sure you create a new level. There's one wing. Touch record and make it go back and forth. 
I'm going to speed that up a little bit because bees, you know, flap their wings really fast. So by moving two fingers across this bar, I've speeded it up. Now I could put it on the far side of them like this, but I think it'd be more interesting if it was here. B. Okay, did. And can anybody tell me how I how I can uh, mirror that? A third finger tap, and now it's been mirrored. Group these elements. Now another way to group them is by by touching select here, the select button, and then just dragging your finger till they all turn yellow. So there, you got just the head. So I gave him some legs. I can create a new level and I can add on to those legs. Animate these guys going back and forth. Might just duplicate them and drag them across. Select all that stuff and group it together. Takes a little while at first, uh, but um, you can get pretty fast at it. And then you can make your B move around wherever you want. And if I move back to the red square, that'll be a complete loop. So you keep doing that same flight, the flight of the bumblebee. You got to remember when something's moving, it's harder to see. So you don't have to have a lot of detail in something that's moving. You can really simple forms are just fine. How did you duplicate something again? Sorry? Duplicate. I'll duplicate the bumblebee right here. Can you see that duplicate button? Do you uh, have that on your version? No, I don't. I don't think so. No, nope. you're right. It's not there. I'm sorry. You have to recreate it. You can group though, you have the group and you save them to the deck. One way to duplicate him would be to, to, to save him here to the deck. You see I've saved him? Duplicate button. So once you save him to the deck, then you can just drag in as many as you want. Just gotta remember to make him email address here. Um, Chat. First, I'll give you the Shakefest email address. Email address. Now, this is my email address. If you have any questions about the tag tool, feel free to ask me. All you have to do is hook up a projector. Um, you'll need an HDMI adapter and it should just go straight on and it won't show the interface like uh, you're seeing the interface. You'll, you'll, you'll see this like full screen. Anything and uh, we'll, uh, I'll add them to a video. You have them flying around this uh, crazy background. Might be a great way for you to do a school project or something. Bring an animation, mix an animation with something you've drawn. Sometimes I cut the pieces up and I animate them separately in Tag Tool. See if I can give you an example of what that would look like. Here's a picture uh, I drew. 
And you can see I created the various elements in Tag Tool. I cut them. And so then I made it into one animation. Kind of a little bit Monty Python-like. It's, um, it's good if that's the effect you need. I don't use it all the time, but it's, sometimes it's a good animation tool. Good way of uh, doing a, a, a poor man's animation. You can do stuff really fast. For example, um, if I have to animate something moving in a, in a video I'm doing, I do what's called a, a, green, a green screen uh, background. You go to a green screen, take the brightest, greenest color you can come up with, like this one here, like that. And anything you draw on that will be really easy to cut, to cut out and use. So you can, uh, you can animate on top of that. You just did the whole thing of a, a bouncing ball, you know, like going to show something bouncing. It'd take a long time to animate a bouncing ball, but I can just do it like this. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce. Add some sound effects. Looks like it's bouncing. Speed it up a little bit in uh, editing app. You can do all kinds of uh, cool things really quickly. The way to save it um, is to capture the output from the video projector, or as they have this new function they just added, which is really cool, is that little camera at the top. At that moment, you can you can save what you're doing in that period. It only saves about a minute. Um, or your creations, you can save them by using the deck on the right. Okay. Yeah. Nice things about it though is that you're able to uh, work with other people. You know, if we were in the same space, you could use a wireless network to connect them, work on a session because you can keep it moving. I find three people gets kind of crowded. Yeah. And uh, got any questions? Don't don't hesitate to, uh, to ask. Okay.